Hi, I'm Alicia from The Art of Just Being. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about how our body can drive habitual patterns, our pain is, is there to tell us a story basically. So if you think about our body, our life, our experience as a storybook of all emotion, you know, it's a tale of pain, trauma, happiness, joy, excitement. It, it's, it's a book of, of everything, everything we have felt, smelt, tasted, touched, every experience you know, that we have come across in our life. Our whole body, our whole mind, our whole soul has experienced, you know, a part of it. These experiences have touched aspects of these, these dimensions in our body uh, or layers, we'll call them layers. And so it's only rightly, you know, rightly so uh, from the way I work is that I work with a person's layers. I work with them emotionally. I work with them physically. I work with them spiritually, I work with them mentally. And I also work with them uh, on a nutritional aspect because what you know, the way we, way we feel, the, the things that we experience uh, create certain thoughts, you know, patterns, beliefs in our mind. And these beliefs end up creating a, a certain feeling. So, you know, we might feel like um, it's not okay to owe people things. And so we're, if, if that's our train of thought that we grew up, you know, we don't owe anybody anything, always pay them that. What we end up doing is we're always on guard when it comes to money, say, or, you know, returning something to somebody. Even if it is that someone has given you something in return for something, there may be some sort of subconscious issue where, no, that's not, not, that's not okay to then that be the end of the line. I gave that person something. They gave me back something. Um, and then that's it full stop. What, what this pattern of it's not okay to owe or be in debt to anybody is that it can give this false reading in your mind. And it may be that, you know, you gave something to somebody they gave something to you back and then you go, Oh crap. What can I do now to uh, bring back some homeostasis, equilibrium, some balance to this again? You know, I owe them something, but really you, you probably don't, you know, you probably don't owe them anything at this stage. They're probably quite happy with the exchange of whatever it was, money, energy, um, uh, activity, just as it was, as it is. So, so basically, this pattern of thinking that everyone has a, a whole set, like there's, I call them limiting beliefs, um, but, you know, they're not really limiting because at the time when you've learnt them, they've, they have created something. But not only have they created a, some movement for you and something like a, a, a series of guidelines to live by, they also have limited you in the way that they've put up some barriers. So instead of just going, all right, well, you know, we give, we receive, it's an ebb and flow, it doesn't really matter, um, it's how I feel about it, which is quite liberating and free flowing, which is what a lot of people especially clients who have come and seen, seen me, a lot of people really are looking for in life. They're living by this, you know, I owe, I'm always owing. But really their mind sees it as I always have to give back. But the pattern is I'm always owing. So anyway, what I'm trying to get at is um, we have these series of limiting beliefs and they drive the way we feel. So imagine if you had that fear, that, that limiting belief where, all you did was feel like you just owed people money, you'd feel really down. You'd feel really in lack all the time. And that's enough to drive the whole fight and flight response in your body, you know, like really um, shutting down all the pleasurable centers because there's so much stress in trying to just survive, you know, trying to just hit that baseline. Um, so the, the things that we have in our mind, the thoughts, learning, beliefs drive our emotions. And now think about how our emotions affect the way we, we move, the way we sit. You know, you don't see someone who's down um, jumping around. You know, they might have their shoulders curled in, their head sort of forward. Um, they might have a bit of a droop on their face. 
um, their posture when they're sitting may be quite also slunched forward. So there's a lot of that. And that is really symbolic of this protection. You know, I'm going to protect myself here because I don't really feel that comfortable. I feel pretty down and, and I feel vulnerable. So if I just close everything forward and down, I've got my walls up and I'm okay. But if we live like that, then where is the potential for growth? You know, if we're walking around the time where we're just hunched over and protecting ourselves from um, things, because when we're in fight and flight, we start to become really quite hypersensitive, you know, so sounds can be louder. Um, they can make you feel really <gasps> like this. You can, like I said, all your pleasurable system shut down. So your digestion might not be just right. You might lose your libido. Um, you might lose your appetite. Um, you may crave things that keep you awake because you're starting to feel really tired and less energetic. So, you know, there are only but a few things, but that, that's quite, that's what's, what's happened. So if you've got these limiting beliefs you haven't worked with, you don't even really know about, and then they're driving a series of like a subconscious, um, it's like a subconscious program that makes you feel a certain way. And so when people say things to you, it triggers these feelings. And then that internalizes this posture and the way we may walk around. So with that sort of like thing, not upright, you know, it really does affect our structure. Um, and all of our muscles start to re, um, they start to compensate. So some muscles will be used, they call them ancillary muscles. So muscles that are sort of the superficial muscles, not the deep core muscles. And so with the stuff that I do is that I work to try and help you understand your living beliefs because they're there whether you like it or not. Then I get you to revisit the feelings that come with those beliefs because when we really feel something, we, our eyes light up. We actually really understand deep down. Um, then by feeling that, we work to find out, well, what are all the things, what's the context around it? You know, why has this been your pattern? Why has this been important? And what now can you learn from that to make it your friend rather than your enemy? So instead of these limiting beliefs and uh, feelings really weighing you down, you can go, hang on a minute, I'm starting to do that thing where I start to feel like crap. So let me just look at it a little bit more in detail. Oh, that's right. That's where I am overly giving. And in order for me to give properly, I probably need to give to myself first. And that's okay. It's not selfish. It's okay. So basically, it's what I do. I help people really um, understand themselves from many, many, many different levels. And then I help them um, have tools. And tool these tools are not they're not for the whole, they're not the same for everybody. That's why it's important to have these one-on-one -on -one sessions because they are tailored to you exactly, exactly with what we're talking about, with what comes up. It's very specific. So mind-body medicine is, um, is a really good tool for working with all those areas and making sure that your health and well-being is specific to you. All the things that address your health and well-being are specific to you no question about it so um, that's just in a nutshell really and on the other um, aspect of this so we've got the we'll just go back over it so you've got your limiting beliefs which is your your mental state affecting your emotional state which affects your physical state and that physical state that posture not only changes the musculature in your body but it also changes the way that pro your body processes so then you've got the nutritional body and then all those things put together, imagine what you put out into the world. So it's your energetic body. It's pretty interesting. So hopefully it's not too much information. I didn't really want to overload you today. I just wanted to give you a little insight as to, you know, what is in a session. And that's basically what is in a session. And sessions go for about an hour and a half. The initials go for two hours. Depends on different practitioners, though, you know, and the types of work they do. For me, I'm quite, I see emotion, like I said, as a real driver, um, thoughts and emotions as real drivers to creating and manifesting illness. I won't say illness, sorry. I say symptoms in the body um, and your ability to cope and self-soothe and get through traumatic experiences. So that's how I work, how I work. 
um, and the physical stuff I do as well as part of that because all this trauma can be stuck in the body. So I do lots of body work. Um, I also do Skype sessions. I don't have to. I can get you to do the body work for yourself. Uh, other people might just be physical based. They might just be nutritional based. They might just be energetic healing based. So my primary specializing sort of factors are that I do emotions, thoughts and emotions, um, and get you to understand that. So I really do help you to understand and decipher the language of your body. So you become best friends with it because, you know, you are born as you are with yourself and you will leave the earth the same way. So that whole in between, you know, it's the most, it's most important that you become friends with yourself the best way that you know how because all your experiences with people around you, you know, might be a partner, um, uh, family, family members, friendships, just anything, work relationships, you know, being successful in your business, being um, just feeling really good within, yeah? All these connections all are, are genuine when we really connect with and understand who we are. So that's me. I hope you really enjoyed this. If you have any questions, um, you contact me via email. You can find my information on the website, alicia at theartofjustbeing.com. Um, you could also uh, find me via Facebook, the art of just being, uh, the art of just being. Um, or if you see this on Facebook, just make a comment below and, you know, make some contact and let me know your story and how this has benefited you. So have a really, really good evening, afternoon or daytime, wherever you are in the world. And I can't wait to hear from you.